majority of the population are under 35. What are we doing about the youth? Because the youth constitute one of the uh, important pillars that we're focused on. Let me say the youth are not only the future of this region, but uh, I believe we are the present and future. Uh, if we define what do we mean by young people, there is this external perception that young people are a homogeneous group. This is not the reality. We have also young people in vulnerable settings. We have young people uh, with disabilities and we have foremost young women. But again, a population that is ill-skilled and unemployed can be a demographic curse. So this is the challenge. But the opportunity is in us trying to convert this demographic dividend into opportunities. But also young people as being the largest population, they are our biggest asset. Because the richness of nations is not in stones but in its people. It's never been more important to develop our youth into confident and transformational leaders that can navigate Africa through the incoming economic and political climates. Africa's youth are faced with growing concerns about how to thrive in their purpose. And that's where you Lead Africa comes in. Founded in 2017, we are Africa's flagship youth leadership program, following the youth's greater demands in expanding our work from the East African community to the continent. There are many challenges facing young people on the African continent. The biggest one of them is that each and every one of the young people in Africa have the desire to become a leader. I think investment should be made more to build the capacity of young people in Africa to become effective leaders. Under globalization, the world is small. The whole world, the outside there, has skills. We need to equip our youth with the requisite skills so that they participate properly, even in, in global interaction. And this means that we need to do more to create economic opportunities and work opportunities for young people. UNIT for me represents that opportunity for young people to first of all think about their problems collectively and then develop, if it be um, disruptive strategies, to take action on addressing those challenges. The summit is not, not just a three days or four or five days event for young people to come and chit chat and go home. Whatever they are saying is influencing our one-year work, what we call the post-summit agenda. With now more than 10,000 alumni and over 30 partners, an active partner-led work in all five major African regions, a One Young Africa is our vision. We have a great vision. We're envisioning 150 delegates in person, 20,000 virtually, but this is not to me the only success indicator. The success indicator is ensuring that all these 20,000 young people virtually provide inputs and meaningful engage throughout the conversation and all their suggestions are then incorporated into our post-summit agenda. Look at 2017, just East Africa coming together and now thousands of African young people. Summit 2021, we are proud to announce that we are going continental, coming together as a one young Africa. And we want actually to break the borders. The CFTA is here. We want African young people to come together under your lead summit platform, trade together across the borders, innovate together across the borders, and create jobs as well as prosper together. That's what drove us to become, you know, one young Africa. We have the potential and the capacity to do so. From 8th to 12th November 2021, we are hosting Africa's largest hybrid summer ever with your Leeds Africa's patron, His Excellency Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete, former president of Tanzania as chief convener and Honorable Dr. Peter Matuki, the EAC Secretary General as co-convener. The theme is the future of Africa, creating jobs, feeding and housing the world's youngest continent. I call upon policymakers, development partners, the private sector, media, civil society and other stakeholders to be part of and support the staff and community in convening this year's ULID Summit. It will attract participation from all the partner states of the ESU and indeed the continent. I thank you, Asadeni Sana, C 
see you in Arusha. Tujenge vijana wetu. Since 2017, Ulit Summit, as popularly known, is jointly convened annually by the East African Community and MS Training Center for Development Cooperation in Arusha, Tanzania, in collaboration with a myriad of partners. COVID-19 is both a blessing and a curse, equally. We have seen how the COVID pandemic has hit very hard young people. And this is why you lead Africa. We will bring together more than 15,000 people on a single platform because travel is restricted, but more people come together through the internet, courtesy of COVID-19. We are welcoming a virtual and physical audience from all African countries together on the same platform. Nonetheless, COVID-19 has reduced the opportunities for young people. Young people have lost jobs, and COVID-19 pushes us beyond the boundary to innovate and create jobs that we have lost using COVID-friendly mechanisms such as online platforms, as well as increased cooperation between and among young people across the borders, especially under the CFTA, which regards that trade should happen beyond borders of any country. The 2021 summit will be delivered in the form of thematic forums, the Under 40 Political Leaders Forum, which examines current representative democracy models. The Under 40 Business Leaders Forum assesses the existing environment for doing business. So it is important to engage and involve youth from initial uh, discussion about our drive uh, to promote continental free trade area. The Arusha debate is infused into your lead summit to generate insights into how to make social and economic development a reality. Yes, so the Arusha debate um, is being convened by ourselves, MSTCDC. Uh, as you know, we're quite um, uh, curious, but also propagate uh, pan-Africanism and knowledge that is homegrown and bred. Arusha hosts a number of higher education institutions, and uh, it's the right place for hosting the Arusha debates. The Tanzanian government has been so keen under the leadership of Our Excellence Samia Sulu Hassan in getting all the youth participate. The Arusha Peace Model showcases models that promote the role of youth in peace building. The Gender Equality Forum discusses ways to dismantle the structural causes at the root of gender inequality. East Africa to Bonke, a joint flagship initiative of Unite Africa and Kenya Young Parliamentarians Association, KYPA, to foster young leaders' legislative enlightenment. ULIT Summit 2021 Key Milestones Launch of the East African Youth Agenda Unveiling the inaugural EAC ULIT Fellowship Launch of the Youth Governance Architecture Study Series Unveiling the Elected Young Leaders' Performance and Cooperation Peer Review Mechanism launch of the Arusha debate through the inaugural Arusha debate session. There are so many opportunities for partnership and ways to work with us or contribute financially to our cause. Contact us. You can also connect with us through our social media channels at One Young Africa. You lead Summit 2019 is the Africa that we want. And I really appreciate ULEAD Summit for giving us a platform on how we can build a collective power to create a sustainable movement that will help us create change in our society. So I'm very, very happy to participate in ULEAD Summit 2019. ULEAD Summit is really awesome. ULEAD Summit Youth Power. ULEAD Summit is empowering. ULEAD Africa. A one young Africa where dreams are born and youth become leaders. The ULEAD Summit 2021 is here. Since 2017, the ULEAD Summit has been jointly convened by the East African Community and MS Training Center for Development Cooperation in Arusha, Tanzania. This annual climax event is now East Africa's largest and most diverse forum for young leaders, mentors, 
government policy makers, development partners, academia, media, private sector and civil society from all over the continent. To craft responses to the continent's rapidly growing youth population, their challenges and opportunities. Wondering how to become a delegate? Head over to our website www.uleadsummit.org. Follow the prompts and enter all the required information and submit. After submission, your application will go through assessment, review and finally admission. Admitted delegates will be announced weekly on our platforms until we officially close applications. One day before the summit, delegates will be able to log in and get acquainted with our virtual space. You will be able to visit partner booths and product stands, check the forums you've registered for, view the conferencing environment, confirm venues for all your sessions, network with fellow delegates via our live chat room and lounge, and view the conference schedule. Once the summit kicks off, you will be ushered into our virtual summit lobby where you can ask questions at the info desk and speak directly to us. At this point, you can navigate to different areas of the summit. The exhibition hall. Here you will find a collection of booths by our partners and sponsors. In these booths, you can interact with our partners and sponsors directly via live chat and you can view and save uploaded documents and videos as well as view products and services. Auditoriums. The ULEAD Summit comprises several thematic sessions. The Under 40 Political Leaders Forum, the Arusha Peace Forum, the Gender Equality Forum, the Arusha Debates Partner-led Workshop Sessions, and East Africa to Bongay. You will have access to all these auditoriums where you can watch live and semi-live webinars. You can also ask questions and talk to fellow delegates and other attendees in the live text chat, the lounge. Here you can live chat with other attendees and delegates in between sessions. So log on to www.uleadsummit.org to register and apply. I will say by the content and the suggestions that young people give, uh, of course numbers are important and we have a great vision. We're envisioning 150 delegates in person, 20,000 virtually, but this is not to me the only success indicator. The success indicator is ensuring that all these 20,000 young people virtually provide inputs and meaningful engage throughout the conversation and all their suggestions are then incorporated into our post-summit agenda. Seeing a program that is co-created by young people, that's for me the biggest success. There are many challenges facing young people on the African continent. The biggest one of them is that each and every one of the young people in Africa have the desire to become a leader. I think investment should be made more to build the capacity of young people in Africa to become effective leaders. So you leave. So you leave. So you
MC Benny. Come on, East Africa. Ha! This a party. Ah. Tell them. Hello, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Let me see if you can all hear me. Hello, let me see if you can hear me. Am I audible? Uh, my colleagues, Angie, yeah, we, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, that's good. Thank you very yes. much. Yes, I can. Yes, yes I that's can. good. Okay, thank you. I can see now people saying they can hear me. Thank you very much. We were trying to buy time to see if we can get more participants, but I'm sure they will be joining. Welcome to all of you who have been here. Uh, since, uh, what time is it in Kigali now? Since 2 p.m., yes. 2, uh, 2 p.m. Yes. Uh, I am Kazeneza Iget. I am a Burundian, but I live in Nairobi, and I work at ULID in the regional coordination team. I will be the moderator of this session. Um, I was... Uh, asked if uh, to see if we want to do it just in English completely, or if we can be switching on between uh, English and Kinyarwanda. I don't speak Kinyarwanda, I speak Kirundi, although I can understand very well. But I am, uh, we are open so that uh, during the discussion, if somebody wants to speak and make uh, his comment or her comment in Kinyarwanda, you are welcome. We have many uh, from our team who can, uh, if there is anything I miss, I can be calling them to help me translate, but I hope I will get everything. I will, I will uh, just try to see if I have my panelist. just I saw uh, Cyrus is already here. I have, um, I'm just checking to see if Sonia, Sonia, if you are here, I haven't seen her unless she entered with another name. Uh, she hasn't joined. Uh, Yvette Nira Sabibana. Sabibana or Sabibana? I don't know if the name is Nira Sabimana. Sabimana, that's, that's the Man, I see you here. Welcome, Yvette. Thank you very much. Yes, I also, we are also supposed to have um, uh, Mr. Robert Mwesiwa from the National Youth uh, Council. He might be also joining. Let me see if he has already joined, not yet. Uh, my colleagues at the back end will be helping me to get um, the speakers and letting me know who has already joined and who is joining. Thank you very much again to all of you who are here. Uh, as I was saying, uh, this has to be has to be nice because we have to conclude in in a nice way. We have started this journey since last week. We did Kenya last week on Wednesday, uh, Kenya and. Uh, no, 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 on Tuesday, Kenya and Uganda, and then we had uh, Burundi and Tanzania on Wednesday. Today we are concluding with South Sudan and Rwanda. We have already finished with South Sudan in the morning, and at this point we are starting with Rwanda. I am so grateful to everyone who is already here, and I am having my colleagues at the back end who will be supporting uh, Ivan Sebastian, who is in Uganda, Beatrice Marand, who is in Arusha, uh, Angel Motoni, who is in, in, um, 
in Kigali, same with Epiphany to Isenge, and I have also, I think, Kamala Dixon, all those are colleagues, and Messi Awin from, um, from Uganda. Thank you. Uh, for, you will see them chatting with you here. So this session, as uh, I'm sure many of you have already started knowing how it is, because we have been publishing all videos, uh, it's a session we are doing on East Africa. We want consultations where we are trying to gather uh, views and contributions from all uh, six countries of East Africa. And all those views, we will put them together in what we call the East Africa Youth Agenda. This East Africa Youth Agenda will have two components. One is the political governance, which we have already done last year. And this year we are concluding with a component of, of the economic governance. Today we are going to talk mainly about business. I hope all of us will get so much inspired to go start something. Um, and then, but uh, we will also talk about the uh, East Africa um, and the leadership we want for our region. That is something we are doing together with uh, the Jakaya Kikwete Foundation. As you all might uh, know, um, uh, the former president of Tanzania, Mauricio Jakaya Kikwete, is our ULID patron, and we have been working with his foundation to create a fellowship on leadership. So those are two components we are going to have in this discussion. We'll talk about economy and we will talk about the leadership. Welcome again to you all, just to remind my colleagues, if one of our speakers arrive, please uh, let me just uh, let me know. Thank you very much. Um, one second. Okay. Trying to get to the document of today. Yes. Uh, so um, as another point I want to make before we start this uh, consultation, we are doing it also with kind of, if I can call them, uh, three methodologies. We have a panelist who will be giving us the ideas, but uh, I will be opening uh, uh, the session also to everyone who wants to say something. Just uh, if you are not a speaker, just use your, your hands, Zoom hand, raise your hand, and I will be calling you to answer, but also you can use the chat Anytime I ask a question, you can just go ahead and type your answer through the, the chat. However, we will also use polls. Now, uh, near the chat box here in, in, in front of, uh, on your, your desk, if, if, if you are using a computer, you have a chat box near there is polls. I think it is also the same to those who have phones when the, the polls will be launched, you can see, and you can just go through and answer the polls so that we gather all kind of uh, contributions and views from, from you. Thank you very much again for being here. I will just start with a question. Um, uh, let, me, let me just uh, call, um, uh, Ange, Ange Marie Yvette. Yes, that's, um, I, I think in, in, uh, in, in, you have been observing what, in what you do in young people you have been interacting with, with your organization and what, by the way, please feel free to present yourself better when, when you start speaking. Uh, do you think, for example, that the formal education we attain in school, especially in Rwanda, prepare young people for economic success? Is the education in Rwanda uh, really a, a, 
up to date to start preparing young people to face um, uh, the, the whole uh, changes or in the economy in doing businesses and being entrepreneurs, all those kind of things. To you, Yvette, I just want to ask anyone who has a mic open, please mute your microphones. Go on, Ange. Uh. Your mic is muted. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I was saying I'm Ange Marie Yvette Nyasarimana. Currently, I'm the Youth Engagement Program Coordinator in a national and government organization called Citizen Voice and Actions. We mainly focus on youth engagement in democracy and governance processes, mm -hmm. but we also work on child rights GBV. So you are, you are asking me, do our formal education you get in Rwanda prepares young people really to be economically successful? Mm. Uh, the answer is, it might. You gave me a scale. I I pointed on four, mm -hmm. a five scale, and I, I pointed on four. Mm. Why? Okay, in Rwanda, our education, our formal education system is good, but it has to be improved because sometimes, like for science courses, they go through, like, they get knowledge but less practical work for for science and math courses. But when we go into polytechnics and TVETs, they get they get more involved into practice work which improves their success scale into economics mm -hmm. or in their success into getting them self-employed or getting them ready for job market mm -hmm. see my answer is there and mm -hmm. yes our education is affordable because mm -hmm. If you're not, you cannot afford to go for public schools, which I may say are now expensive, we mm. have nine and 12 years basic education that each everyone mm. is capable of affording, mm. where the government supports the vulnerable people and mm. people into poverty to get the basic education that mm. is necessary for a young people to prepare him or herself for economic growth. Mm. That's my answer. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ange. I'm, 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 I'm liking Ange because she's also not just answering my questions, but also checking the questions on Paul. That, that's very good. Thank you very much, Ange. Um, Thank and you. Uh, yes, so anyone else? You guys, um, we can comment in English, in Kinyarwanda, I'm, I'm open. If you have any, any comment, our education, Mugwanda, does it prepare us to become a successful if we want to do business or if we want to start a job? Does it, does it help us? Hmm? Anyone? I I see um Cyrus ya dugiji since ko ya komnya mashi change ya dugiji kuwok is Cyrus do you want to say something? Uh kazene zawa I am good. Namoro. Namoro cha. Eko na dugiji kuwok. Eh. Well um maybe to supplement on what Angel was saying. Mm. I think, first of all, there are three things. There are three things uh, when we are maybe talking about education. Uh, one is uh, the, the political will, mm. then institutions, mm. uh, then policies. Mm. So I think we have all the three in Rwanda. Mm. We have a political will. 
Mm. The government have put in place the institutions, mm. uh, including the Rwanda Education Board, the Ministry, and other agencies. Mm. Then also mm. the policy that supp uh, supports, uh, supports, I mean, um, uh, vocational trainings, mm. uh, mm. hands-on skill are really in place and are getting improved. But I guess, to me, my personal analysis, of course, with no statistics, I have no, done no research on this, mm. uh, is that um, the will is there, the policy there, institutions are there, mm. but uh, maybe the informants, the teachers, because we all understand and we have that passion, but I think we need more uh, trainers who are the teachers to be trained more on these skills because mm -hmm. you may have an idea but in a professional way i mm. think um, that's how i can answer your question we, mm. we really have um uh decent place but mm. we need more expertise um or professional teachers who are really qualified in this not just mm. to attend a course of mm. one to six months and come and teach learners who are going to manage the economy or contribute to revenues that will run in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cyrus. Uh, I think that's uh, what we have been hearing, not just really in Rwanda, in many countries, people are saying the education is there, but we lack uh, the practicality uh, you might have formal education, but when now you have to, to go into the job market, now that's where you are like, oh, okay, there are things I need. I think I would have been able maybe to practice before uh, um, this yes, time. Yes. Uh, something, yes. Small. Mm. something small. I think this meets um, the theme of mm. ULIT, the mm. ESC we want. Mm -hmm. So the ESC we want uh, is ESC of free movement mm -hmm. of uh, human capital, mm -hmm. uh, people and goods, whereby an expert, because you find all the uh, hospitality institutions in Rwanda, you find mm -hmm. the Kenyans, and most of them, not uh, you find Utali College from Kenya are mm -hmm. producing many and good employees across the uh, the the region. You go in mm -hmm. Uganda, you find the mm -hmm. manager is from Utali College in Kenya, mm -hmm. you go to South Sudan. I think the ESC we want is mm -hmm. the ESC of free movement, um, of no uh, specific nationality, uh, whereby an, an expert from Burundi or Uganda or from Rwanda can go to South Sudan and uh, give knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's something I had forgotten. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I just want to read one of the comments uh, uh, from Jean-Claude Murenzi, if I, I read well. Uh, let me see. Yes. Murenzi Ashimwe. Uh, yeah, education is very affordable in our country, and as Ange mentioned it, where the government has tried all its best to make each and every child to access education by establishing nine and 12 years basic education. And also the government has tried also to put much effort on improving the training skills, like vocational training center across the country that will ripe more people with special skills, uh, with special skills, those are technical that are there in the market. Also in the university, the government tried to establish this lesson of entrepreneurship in all the faculties in University of Rwanda across all colleges. And this boosts students with business skills that will also boost the country's economy. Thank you very, very much, Jean-Claude, for all this great contribution. And thank you uh, from, uh, uh, to hear from you. I, uh, anyone, I see Noel. Noel, just use one minute, go on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. 
Welcome. <coughs> there was also living in uh, Kenya, Yayasin. Mm. Oh, I just traveled uh, last month for my marriage in Rwanda. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, so when we try to analyze uh, the education in Rwanda, if mm. you can chance uh, for the youth or people to find work mm. is affordable. Mm. First of all, I think in secondary studies, it is affordable, but when it reaches a university, it is a bit expensive. Mm. Uh, then concerning the way it can help uh, students in general to get to work, mm -hmm. uh, it is not easy because uh, I myself, I studied in fact in Rwanda, Kenya, and Cameroon. Mm. But when I reached in Cameroon, I saw that Cameroonians are very much competent than Rwandans. Mm. Uh, I remember what we're doing, we're doing interpretation and translation. Mm. In my case, because I studied in National University of Rwanda, mm. when you are studying uh, interpretation and translation, mm. we we're not given a chance to try practical uh, things, for example, softwares that translators use. Mm. But when I reached the Vodaini Cameroon, I remember all the lecturers who were mm. teaching us were trying to explain us about those uh, softwares. So I think I want to try the road, but the mm. thing I think focus on so that uh, youth can find work is mm. to try to teach things that are practical on the field, not mm. just sharing the literature from the books. Thank mm. you. Thank you very, very much. I just want to acknowledge, I think uh, Robert from National Youth Council has joined. Hello, Robert. I'm trying to... to, to Yes, I think I can see him. Hey, if you can just open your mic and say hi. Hi. <laughs> actually, cousin, actually, cousin Eza, this mm. is his meeting. He has to say something even before we continue. Yes, that's what I was going to do. I'm a horror child. <laughs> I'm a horror. Hey, I to go to your meeting, but... but this is now your time to say Great. welcome and then we can continue. So thank you so much. I think uh, I've been invited in this meeting like well, last week. And I think I talked to, to Ange that I will be joining a bit late because I had some other commitments. Um, and I'm happy to be part of this meeting as well. Mm. And um, I think I have to, to put in my inputs about the, the topic we are discussing about. Mm. And then we see how can we prepare the way forward as we, we are coming to the Urid Africa Summit? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are we are open, this meeting is being done in two languages, maybe three because mine is Kirundi. Abashaka <laughs> Kugira contribution, we are open to have Mutongereza, Hanyuma, Mukinyagwanda, no Mukirundi Chiwanj. We have our people taking notes and they are able to do that in all those languages. Karibu Chane, Robert, and then we, we are going to continue our discussion. Thank uh, you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we, we were just talking about how uh, the education, uh, if the education system is, is preparing young people uh, to be economical, uh, successful in, in what they do. But uh, I will just go actually directly to you with almost the same question. Um, looking at the job market in Rwanda, job demand, uh, job market demands in Rwanda, do you, which training do you think can help more young people to be successful? Is it a vocational training? Is it formal skills training? Is it entrepreneurship? Or is everything combined? 
uravye ingene ingene mu Rwanda a job uh, market demand emerge Thank you. I think um, when you're talking about the job market, I, I understand I should first address this one at the policy level. Mm. Then maybe I even talk about two different interventions by the government in terms mm -hmm. of uh, private sector, in terms of uh, mm. other government institutions. I think what is very, very important that we should even mm. need to know more mm. The problem of unemployment is a global issue. Mm. And of course, some very many states, some governments have one way or another of handling or of addressing the problem of unemployment. In Rwanda, at the policy level, you know, we have been having Vision 2020, we are coming with the ADPIs. Now we have a seven year government program, what you call national. national uh, NST1. Mm. Now, when you are talking about NST1, actually you have a very big component of addressing a problem of unemployment mm. among women and youth. Mm. In the National Strategy for Transformation, as a policy in Rwanda, we have mm. very, very, very big pillars. Mm. One was with economic transformation, mm. another one was with social transformation, mm. and the last one was, of course, with the governance. Mm. In component one, mm. we have at least a target of creating 1.5 decent and productive jobs mm. every year. Mm. No, a seven years program. Mm. At least every year, we should be having maybe more than 400,000 US job, 400,000 jobs, sorry. Mm. Mm. So what does it mean here? Mm. When you are at the, that is the policy level, mm. we are trying to see how can we, as the government, mainstream mm. mm. job opportunities. Mm. I mean, that means government is different government institutions. When we talk about agriculture, what are the opportunities are within the agriculture sector? Mm. We are talking about infrastructure. What mm. do we have in infrastructure? Mm. But at the same time, we need to establish. Rwanda with globally with a human capital development, the capacity mm. in terms of positioning Rwandan young people to be globally competitive. That means mm. we need to have mm -hmm. well equipped young people with equipped skills. Mm. That goes with how can we support youth innovations? Mm. That one with, of course, you need increasing in digital literacy, mm. and of course, coming up with the support from different stakeholders on business advisory support, mm. for example. Mm. Now, when we go to social transformation as a, the next pillar, mm. we need to talk about access to education. Mm. I joined when people are talking about access to education, mm. universal education. Mm. But at the same time, access to infrastructure. Because when you talk mm. about education, with these global changes, you need to know even infrastructure in terms mm. of internet penetration, mm. in terms of what I have talked about, the, the digital literacy. Mm. How are you going to have the infrastructure vis a vis education? Mm. And how are you going to have access to education? Coming to your point, mm. we have a very big challenge, I think. When, when you're talking about Rwanda now, as you're mm. talking about the African community, mm. we needed to have Rwanda position mm. in the region in terms of seizing into other opportunities. But when we talk about this ESC, we are talking about market. Mm. But at the same time, when you talk about East Africa as market, as integration, basing on other opportunities that within the region, but let's go now to education mm. and have access. Mm. But someone would say, what type of education do we need now? Mm -hmm. Because we, we should first identify employability skills. That is mm -hmm. a, a very big problem, lack of employability skills. As much as we are positioning ourselves as young people within the region, but 
Which, which skills do we have? Mm. So there have been these changes, not even in Rwanda, everywhere, mm. Mm. of education system that should be used in, at least to increasing the supply of the money power responding now to the what? To the demand. Mm. You understand? Mm. So in Rwanda, we have access, we have been dealing with the curriculum. Mm. But how are we going to deal with the curriculum when we're talking about the education system? And we respond immediately mm. to the opportunities we're talking about within the region. If you talk about the Brock as a very big market, that's mm. member states in the South African community. Mm. We have the skilled people with employability skills. Mm. We have a curriculum that responds really to the demand of what is on the market. Mm. Then that's why we can come up with really a, a very good concept of how these young people within the region mm. can benefit to the market, to other opportunities within the region. Mm. But this also goes with some challenges, I may say. Mm. Apart from education, even now, mm. we still have some challenges as young people. Mm. Though I'm advocating for the young people. <laughs> <laughs> not young per se. Mm. But as you see, when you talk about the entrepreneurship, mm. an example, we don't think of entrepreneurship as starting a business. No, mm. we should see it as a process mm. of which an individual identifies opportunities, allocate resources, and create value. Mm. So, much as we are discussing this, and mm. actually, we should always be discussed in mm. each and every forum of young mm. people. We should be talking about job creation, but we look into access to market mm. as well. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm now talking in terms of private, mm. private led economy. I'm talking about private sector. Mm. Talk about access to opportunities, identification, access to opportunities, quality education and skills development. Mm. Then we come up now with the mindset change of entrepreneurship skills, mm. what, I, what I've been discussing. And then we, we, we make sure we now position ourselves to some of these opportunities. Mm. So with education, let it be formal, let it be informal, mm. let it be hands-on skills, of course. You understand we are talking in Rwanda, we have... Uh, an incentivization of vocational training. Mm. How can we incentivize young students at the secondary level or the university level? Mm. How can we make sure these young people can have incentives of affirmative actions that mm. can make them be trained in vocational training? Mm. Actually, initially, we had a, a program of what we call um, whereby you have some graduates. You know, today, when you have uh, a graduate who is a lawyer, mm. in Rwanda, we have arbitration, we have the component of Abunzi. These are people mm. who can serve districts outside the court. Mm. So you find you don't have cases. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we have law. Mm. People should go for law. Mm. So, but at, at the same time, there is a way how. We have, Arbitration, uh, you can, you we can. have homegrown mm. solutions mm. that can address these disputes out of courts. Mm. But the, the, the thinking was, how can a lawyer mm. be trained in another discipline that would provide a lawyer some skills? Mm. And that is a very big uh, process. Yeah. If you can, how can you change a lawyer who is a lawyer who is a very good necktie <laughs> and you tell him that you have to go to do business, get, sell something, and, and get skills <laughs> from one of the vocational training center, mm. so that you, this can help you. But if you are acquired in you know, at the same time, what you can have on the market. Mm. You understand? It, it is it is a process of mindset change, which is not so easy for us. Yeah. No. No. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, we discussion. were all getting getting uh, <laughs> being carried out, and many of the things you have started mentioning 
Uh, yes. I think so we will continue be talking, for example, about the incentives, about taxation, how do we help it, all those kind of things. I will come back to them. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, to all Thanks. who have have uh, been joining again. I just want to go back to, to Cyrus. Cyrus. Uh, yes, I, I see you. Uh, my, my question is about, uh, I know you, you work and you focus also on legal things to know how you can help people, how young you can help young people, all these kind of things. Does the legal framework uh, in terms of labor rights in, in Rwanda protect young people? Ama am since kwa vijita matege kwa yomu kirundu wa vijita matege amatege kwa yomu mugwanda ara ara kingira um uh um urubjiruko that's one I think I got it urubjiruko well, um, I've heard you you yes. know you are struggling to translate from kirundi imagine <laughs> <laughs> well actually that was even a good question. Uh, mm. For Robert, he will um, he will give his yes yes yes. Uh, uh, when we started, I told you things mm. that uh, encompasses all mm. this. So mm. when we are talking about young people, mm. uh, we have children, we mm. have youth, mm. we have also elder. Mm. Uh, but I think Haramatejeko. Mm. Um, haramabwiriza mu Rwanda n'ibyo dufite bibara amabwiriza ariko bitari mu itegeko ariko hari n'ingamba zishyirwaho uh or measures that are put in place to support the laws um or some policies for example um i'll tell you like street children in Rwanda there's even an institution Mm. I'll not call it for street children, mm. uh, but uh, hey, hey. like rebellious children, mm. where they are taken, mm. and actually, that institution it's called Iwawa. It has become a, an institute whereby mm. whoever comes from there. Mm. So they teach them uh, hands-on skill, mm -hmm. language, mm. norms and values, mm. uh, managing diversity, because some of them, these are community mm. robbers. Mm. Uh, so you find they inculcate really uh, mm. into them the spirit of mm. nationalism, patriotism, but mm. also uh, creating a business mm. of um, mm -hmm. competing uh, mm -hmm. in the labor market. Mm -hmm. So I think in Rwanda, uh, with your question, there are measures which are put in place. Mm -hmm. We have the Ministry of Gender, gender and, fam and Family mm -hmm. Promotion. Mm -hmm. We have a Ministry of Youth Affairs and Culture. Mm -hmm. We have uh, institutions, uh, National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. We have Gender Monitoring Office. We have National Women's Council, and uh, I may be forgetting even others. Mm. All these institutions, but we have even Minister of Local Government, we have a Minister of Justice. So all this, and uh, our president for the past uh, 10, eight to 10 years, it has been even in the national retreats, uh, they have been emphasizing about um, children or street children and uh, making sure that those who are not in school, they go back to school. Those that um, who need shelter, they get shelter. I think it has been even um, trending whereby really, um, I'll say poor people, the least poor people have been, the means of local government or government have been providing them with shelter and modern actually uh, apartments uh, in form of settlements where they can access water, electricity, all this, I think um, to have children and good citizens, first of all, it's a, it's a mentality. 
ni myumvire so yababyeyi banje bameze neza nange mera neza mu mutwe so uh, when i'm also uh, my children uh, my parents when uh, they are also well catered mm -hmm. or when they have support they are able to support the children so i think uh, having the community uh, a peaceful community because when you don't uh, cater for these young people mm -hmm. that's when you have the rise mm -hmm. of criminality in our community safety increases mm -hmm. and you never find an old man mm -hmm. six and above aja kwiba television mu rugo rw'umuntu aja kwiba baga y'umuntu because he or she will not manage even to run with that phone mm -hmm. that uh, he has picked from Kazeneza. Mm -hmm. and you know how you young ladies when you have these smartphones you can walk your hand is up there you want to show everyone you have a smartphone so so i think the measures are there the uh, institutions and the policies uh amatege karahari kambuge kuri twembe nka societe civil civil society we have these umbrellas that um we work uh we work with uh, every civil society organization is under an umbrella and the rwanda civil society platform brings them together so to what if it uh, is equal on human rights, children's rights, youth, uh, governance and democracy. But all what we are focusing on, ni mivere homnyiza, yumuturaje gurugwanda. So amateje ko arahari, ariko, from a civil society perspective, mm. is that uh, policies are there mm. and uh, institutions are there. Even the leadership, they are there, but do we do the needful? Mm -hmm. uh, that one I want to respond, mm -hmm. but I guess it needs. I want to, to ask it to young people who are here. Eh? Yes. Let what me, is let the me... contribution? What yes. is the contribution? Actually, you find, let me say, community work. Kapibuga Muchinya Rwanda, Umuganda. Robert Iba Chiripuril on Kumurunga. Mm. For us who go for the community work, mm. you find it will be age of Cyrus and above. All the people, these young people are at home watching movies. Mm. Okay? Mm. And at night, the elements that are the ones stealing. Mm. They will never come. They, some, some of us who are young people, though the, those who are still young, they claim mm. for space. Mm. But they don't come for community work, mm. even raise their issues. Mm. And I think leadership starts from there. It's not to, to be executive secretary like Robert or to be a PS. Mm. Mm. So when we talk about participation or being in leadership, mm. most of young people think about being an MP, being an executive secretary. I think being a, a youth leader at the at the community level, Mudukudu, or mm. the cell, or the sector, or the district, I think it starts from there. So it's a challenge to young people that uh, sometimes these are initiatives, young mm. people are not, uh, uh, don't pay much attention, attention to these yeah. opportunities. So mm. laws are there, institutions mm. are there, policies are there. So it's up to young people to, to grab the opportunity and use them um, effectively. Yes, thank you very much, Cyrus. Um, do you guys know all these kind of laws? And, and, and I want to assure Cyrus, this is something we have also found everywhere. In many countries, laws are there, but as <laughs> we young people, we don't know. Namatege ku adukingira. Yabugirizwa kudukingira changa kadufasha. Many times we really don't know. Just want to, to, to open for two minutes to see. Amatege ku mubu unye bagu haye kazi ahan. Hakagiru munu agufata na avi. Do you know where you can go and, and, and just report? 
uraza matege ko agukingira i see everyone is quiet but i'm just asking i want to know if young people who are here have can can tell us muraza matege ka dukingira let me see nobody wants to say that means we don't it's silence say Sil silence means a lot I, anyway i think it's, it's it's okay no i see i i i, I like jean claude he has answered no um and, and this is a call and i think is one of the things we will have to also uh be trying to 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 address as also you lead and and partners we have a lot of things as young people but we we don't know and that is unfortunate uh, so no, no problem let's let's go on welcome back robert um kibazo kindi nashaka kukiwaza ange ange marie vet but i also want to open it to anyone ne marie ange marie vet ni aheza i will open mwe wesa ashobora kumbwira if you were to say three things treat even with that what are the main challenges causing or sustaining unemployment in Uganda? Even if we have the COVID era, can we become unemployment in Uganda? Anyone else uh, raise the hand and go on? Ego, we're going to Now, when we have unemployment, we have the population of the population. Hmm. Ana ho ndi bugaruke ku na ina raisins hand shaka kubivuga ho oh, fikiri kuri ya kwa education. Hmm. Donc abantu twebwe abakiri bato. Hmm. Koko navuze ko dufite 12 and 9 years basic education. Hmm. Hari abenshi bajya ku ishuri ari kuvuga ngo reka mfe kujayo. Hmm. Ariko ntibumve bimbracing yo privilege yo kuba education iri affordable akaje yo gusanyire no kujayo ariko yumba ntabi hagaciro mm. akumva ko kuba ari ari mu ishuri risa naho ritamusaba mm. finance nyinshi yumva ko nta gaciro byagira mm. yo cyo kibazo cyambere dufite kandi umubare mundi ni w'urubyiruko abenshi bari muri aya mashuri rero mm. ntabwo ntabwo babi hagaciro yo kuba bafite eh, education system iri affordable cyo cyo kibazo cyambere gituma na donc no kuba urubyiruko benshi bari unemployed ni bugiye mm. kwiga ari kumva utari kubiha gaciro ko kuba uri kwiga bitakugoye mm. sinzi ko hari ikintu utahana mm. no kuba batekereza umuri mu runaka mm. icyo nicyo kibazo cy'ambere mm. donc iyo ni problème ya mbere benshi ntago benshi kuba bumva ko education iri affordable kukuri finances zitari hejuru cyane ntago bari kubiha gaciro mm. ikindi cyakabiri uh, urubyiruko abenshi turakiga dushaka kubona imirimo ya leta cyangwa no guhabwa imirimo nabandi bantu bagize donc bakoze job creation nibishakiye imirimo mm. ariko nyamara donc societe nyarwanda muri rusange ibibazo turacyabifite mm. kandi iyo uri umuntu thinking a deep ikibazo wakibonye you can come up with an innovative solution mm. ndatanga urugero Mm. Tuvuge uri umuntu uri kwiga reka nitangira urugero nize governance and leadership muri mm. muri kaminuza mm. niba uri kwiga ibintu by'imiyoborere ariko mm. uka ni uri kubyiga wumba ubishaka kandi umba ari passion yawe mm. kubera iki utegereje ko uzabona akazi muri leta ngo nize politique ngo nize nyine ibiki byose ariko warebye gap ihari mm. kuko governance governance principles zirahari hari mm. ushobora kubona wenda ukabona niba ari kuri inclusion ukabona niba hari population na iri included why can't you come up with an organization all na kintu kime organization donc mm. nono itanga igisubizo kuri cyo kuri cyo kibazo cya inclusion cyangwa mm. ni kuri citizen participation mm. nago benshi ntago turashaka kureba kwiga dushaka gukemura ibibazo biri muri societe kwebwe tuzana ibisubizo ahubwo turacyari gushaka kwiga dushaka kubona imirimo duhabwa nabandi bantu 
kandi ngira ngo leta iri kubitwa nko haja mwige ariko urangiza kwiga wo mushaka gutanga igisubizo mm ikindi cyagatatu ndi buvuge like nta gusoma umuco w'abanyafrika sinzi niba navuga n'abanyarwanda gusa abanyafrika gusoma like ni kibazo rwose ugasanga umuntu turiga ariko dushaka gusubiza bya bindi mwarimu yaduhaye gusa mm nta gushaka kujya usome ibirenzeho ari naho handi cyacyozo twavuze ngo ese urubyiruko tuzi amategeka turengere yo bigeze ku murimo ntabyo pe kubera iki ntabwo twigeze dusoma mm ntabwo uze ese itegeko rinyemerera kuhabwa kazi ku myaka ingahe ndamutse ngiranye ikibazo n'umukoresha nabigenza nte najya hehe amategeko ntabwo ntabwo wayamenya utasome mm ari naho societe civile izamu ugasanga bakora kuri Laws dissemination kuri citizen mm. level kuri mm. noze level zo hasi ugasanga niba ari nka program ya NST1 organization runaka iri ku disseminating urubyiruko yemenye cyangwa n'abaturage muri sanye yemenye indi kaze vuga ngo constitution turi kumanura hasi tege ko nshinga abaturage bo hasi bari menye like mm. turashafite ikibazo pe kandi ngiye ntango mm. nkunda kwerekana ikibazo ngishyira ku mundi nkunda kwerekana ikibazo nkishyiraho ndi kuvuga tukwebwe nyine natwe urubyiruko ngo na wambira igihugu gifite plus de 50% ari urubyiruko ko batudashaka kusoma tumenye amategeko ahari atugenga aturengera tukamenya na obligation mmm ngo tudashaka gusoma sinzi aho twaba turi kwerekeza no I, 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 i like it i think you are my favorite because of this uh, like the, the personal responsibility responsibilities ubundi tuba turi ko turavuga ngo cause ya unemployment tukaba tubona umengo is just government hasn't done this government hasn't done that but you also social like personal responsibility yo kuvuga iti je we nimba naragiye ni shuri some it was even maybe even not just affordable maybe even free mugawo ugasanga na na hobi na ho na na umengo nyene bya bintu biri free no urabiza abanyafrika ikintu kimaze kuba free it's like na value to giha hanyuma nico cyo kumva umengo ni duf ivyo nyene ayenibyo so na 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 zindi research na zindi tugira i just want to read one comment uh let me see somebody ngo anje ngo ikibazo ere gihari ibyo bitekerezo berahari ahubwo ikibazo from the reality is saying like if i can start this organization will i get support either financially or advices i want to open it kubande so ya nibaza ko ari kavuga ari kavuga kucha financial change capital investment chang hibi in vya vya coaching advices and what which i think sometime you can find that but i also acknowledge co uh, finding a capital is not uh, always easy we have been talking about this since we started capital for young people is is not is not a joke and it's not something we can we can um we can uh, ignore it's it's a very important since hardly a band of contribution what do you guys think the main the the, the charges causing unemployment uh, in rwanda i'm reading i'm reading also like for student at buye campus we are surrounded with many challenges from for the society and from their many source of business idea from for the society development but where we are stuck is about our inner fear and actually on how make connection for supporting your ideas na rumba niyo yes very well go on asel Thank you very much ndabashimiye cyane abatugeje ibi biganiro ndashimira mwese turi kumwe muri kino kiganiro kiza cyane kandi kiryohe urubyiruko gitanga n'ikizere kuri twe twese hari ku kibazo kiza mwabajije ndashaka gutanga aho ntunyunganizi ntabwo njya kure bya event yavuze ariko ndatanga urugero ruze kuza kudufasha most of us who are here in Rwanda they know a businessman called Sina Gerard 
Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one uh, in, Jitre, in in northern province in Rwanda who is mm -hmm. uh, um Hello it's me losing Ansel I think we are losing him Oh I hope we will he will be back Ansel can you hear no, okay, no problem. I hope he will be back. Issa, I see your hand. Oh, it was before. I'm not sure if it is now or it was before. Okay, no, pro no problem. Let's go. I, I want to, to bring another question to Robert. Um, Robert, um, can you hear me? Yes, cousin, as I can. Yes, good. Uh, I think there is something you had started talking about. Uh, I want you to uh, um, expand more. Does Rwanda have affirmative actions program for for to support youth access to employment opportunities when disadvantaged? Uh, let me just give an example. Uh, for example, we have young people who have a startup, which is not big, but they are competing with a big, some big companies. Mugwanda, do, do we have uh, some of, of maybe like those incentives you were talking about, which can make young people feel like, you know what, I'm starting, but there is a space for me to, I can still do something also here. Okay, thank you, Kazaneza. I think uh, before even let me make some other a few comments. You see, the reality is, uh, public institutions. Let, let me give an example of Rwanda. Public institutions employ less than three percent of the of, of graduates. Let me use this word, of graduates. I mean, those who have some skills. That means each and every year, we, I think public universities and the private universities, we always have around 15,000 graduates. And I mean, someone who is a graduate, that means immediately he or she wants a job. So how is now government, the, the public institution is are going to absorb this big number to the public offices. And I, actually, this should not be in Rwanda. It should, you should repeat it at a, at a, at a, at a not in Rwanda, even in region, even beyond the region. So what do you think? That's one. Two, how do we expect our readiness, our private sector readiness? How is, how is the, 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 the base, the, the private, private sector base, how is it strong? How is it prepared? How are they going to absorb these young people? Of course, a private person is much so interested in his business running. <laughs> so he would go for the skilled people. If I have, maybe I have a factory or I have something. I mean, I need to have someone who is well qualified. So how are our private sector ready now? That's, that's number two. Number three, I have seen someone mentioning it and we have been discussing this, the access to finance. How does our financial institutions trust our young people when they are creating their jobs? That means they are making their projects, what you call the, the, the product development like that. How do we, how our financial institution is prepared to help with these startups, as you've said. So these are some of these issues, actually, I think Angel was supposed to be mentioning. And of course, the lack of some financial management. When you talk about starting a business, someone who has completed university thinks of starting a business of 20 million. And he has only an idea. <laughs> It's as if when Robert is talking about creating jobs when he has never created even a single job. 
because I mean, <laughs> we talk about creating jobs, but we have never created even a single job, a single productive job to these young people. But at the same time, this doesn't mean that we need to lose hope. Yeah, like what you have asked, we have always in Rwanda, when we talk about startups, I think so far we have a, a, a legal instrument that protects startups with a period of one year, grace period of one year. In, what you call I don't know what you call it in English. So at least a, a startup, you, you can be, you can have a grace period of one year. That is like that one you can hold an incentive. But at the same time, when you are talking about, uh, you see, when you are talking about this, um, the, I, I talk, the, let, let's go back to the private sector. You know, the, the, the youth, I, I just give an example to my, my ministry here I'm working with. We've been having youth connect awards. We've been having uh, how we can promote these young innovations. Recently, we had a recovery plan, what you call recovery and resilience, where we would even support uh, the, the project because of this COVID effects, whereby a project can, can be supported around 3 million in France. But my friends, when you talk, I'm supporting a project which has been affected by COVID, maybe in the agri agribusiness and of the informal sectors. When you give this money to these young people, and we have been making this assessment. <laughs> Within three or four days, you won't get anything. You find he has made some outings that he's saying they are down. Not all of them, but these are some of the examples. So we need really a strong financial management, strong uh, innovative ideas. Otherwise, uh, if you don't think like that, and actually these are some, I have mentioned so very many opportunities. And these are some of these opportunities, how we get information of these financial institutions that provides or that can develop youth-friendly products. Some of these banks, apart from even the, the BDF we're talking about. How do we look into this agriculture business? How many uh, projects do we have? Or how many programs do we have for of agriculture? What are the opportunities that are within the agriculture? Some red high mentioned something very interesting. When you complete your university, it's not about passing exams. This was this was made way back, uh, 20 years back. But this today, <laughs> when you are graduating and you are making a thesis, a thesis ca which cannot create your mind, change your mind to something like thinking of your thesis creating another thing, an added value of creating job. Today, when you are when you are in the soil science, for example, you are a graduate of soil science do something, make a thesis that can be transferred to, to, to something like a group. Otherwise, we have very good policies, very good frame, but don't expect that the government will employ this big number of graduates. Then we have to now come to see how are we going now to strengthen our private sector, advocate for strengthening the private sector and creating some opportunity for these young people and even the change, mindset change of our young people vis-a-vis -vis the graduation, vis-a-vis -vis what, what is on the market. So affirmative actions are there, as I've mentioned, even honestly, I think these young people who are here, recently we injected 450 US dollars in young people uh, projects that was affected by COVID. At least that one from the from our partners. We have been trying to see how can we enhance the business and advisory support from MasterCard. All these daughter one who are here, they should understand. And how see, we, we have like a have like creative industry. It's 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 a it's a one of the sectors that is not really really exploited. But at the same time, we need to even think forward because. If you don't stand for something, of course, you refer for anything that comes. So I think uh, we need to continue discussing. We, ex we share the best experience and the practices from our fellow friends in the region. But we should not think someone wrote it here to be innovative, 
we, we think in terms of thinking hardly. Otherwise, nothing is, uh, is simple. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. I think uh, we will try to even um, some of the questions, the answers you have been giving are from even other questions we are supposed to be asking later, but we will come back to that. I just want um, actually, uh, yes, nothing is simple. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Somebody is telling you nothing is simple. That's very true. Um, uh, I want to ask um, Cyrus uh, just one question. Would you think that the policy environment for doing business in, in, in Rwanda um, favors youth-led businesses? Uh, beg your pardon. Sorry, I'm using my colleague. Yes, I see. I see. Uh, would you say that the policy environment for doing business in Rwanda favor youth-led businesses? Uh, to me, um, I'm not uh, a good business person, but I live in a community <laughs> whereby we have uh, we live in a community of politicians, uh, business people, media, civil society. I think in Rwanda, uh, it's a, even an example of um, uh, a favorable uh, state or government that empowers young people to do business. I'll give an example um, that even big companies in Rwanda are being uh, led or championed by young people. I, when you go to either Volkswagen, the CEOs of many companies in Rwanda, these are young people. And they actually, it's even very hard to find now. Uh, they have started now, you find people in the age of between 20 and 30 or 35 within a AU definition of, uh, of a youth. They're on the board, they're among board directors of big companies. Uh, like yesterday, I was saying, seeing some of the uh, many young people on the board of Equity Bank. It's a very big bank in Rwanda. Others, uh, the board of CBA, Bank of Kigali. Uh, and you find really, uh, when you go to RRDB, Rwanda Development Board, you'll find young people. Actually, uh, they're the ones even who understand the global trend, the global context, and uh, how the world is moving because they have access many of them have gone to this uh, they have exposure mo more than all the people our parents most of them were into the struggle the liberation uh, and others because of our history never even had the chance to go to school so you find it's their children our children who, are, who have ex exposure and uh, who can even talk to investors and who can who understands networking and uh, where to uh, to invest? So in Rwanda, I think this this opportunity and uh, the government has really empowered it. When we see, for example, even uh, uh, this week, this last week, starting with the weekend, we had an expo. I think it was a pro expo in United Arab Emirates. But you find all the Rwanda stands, it's young people that are really showcasing uh, about Rwanda or the business opportunity in Rwanda. So I think it's an opportunity as having uh, the highest population of young people. Uh, it gives us actually half a job to mentor these people to become good citizens. And having good citizens, then we are having a good continent and uh, uh, hence, um, a global uh, citizens that really focus on uh, advancing and uh, making our economy uh, grow. So there's a lot of opportunity for young people in Rwanda. And I think uh, Robert was talking about uh, 
uh, about the opportunity for young people. There's also a concession, a concessions uh, uh, for young people, like when you start business, uh, if it's a hotel, for example, the hotel industry, they even give you 10 years. Uh, they also give you, it will depend on the price if it's up, if it starts with 500 or no, actually 200,000 uh, USD, then you get a concession of a free land because what you're going to invest, it's really heavily and you're going to employ very many people and yet also paying uh, revenues to to the government uh, adding on uh, GDP. So I think to me, maybe, as I told you, I'm not a very good business person, apart from doing business on human capital. But uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity and run for young people in business. No, I think you Thank really you. answered, um, answered uh, already. I will, yes. I'll have to attend another meeting, but as mm -hmm. you can see, this laptop is for uh, my for colleague. Fev. Who, mm. my, so thank you and have a, a good deliberation. Thank you very much, uh, um, Cyrus, and the whole team at, at uh, Governance for Africa. So uh, just uh, want to ask even other young people, guys, you are letting me down. We need to hear your voices. Apart from few people who have been commenting, and I thank so much Jean-Claude Murenzi Ashim, who has been commenting. Uh, and other few, many haven't been talking. So I'm, 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 I'm waiting to hear uh, your voices and, and read your comments. Um, I will, uh, before I go back to, to Ange, I want to bring back uh, Robert. A and I'm sure here you can give us a lot of uh, uh, ideas and, and what is, has been happening, especially is there a special, for example, corporate tax for youth-led uh, startups? I think you have started talking about one year they get um, before they start paying taxes and how convenient is, is the business registration and incorporation process for youth-led uh, business startups in, in, in Rwanda. I, I can just say one thing, I think a few years ago I was living in Italy. And, and one day, one of the programs was talking about how is easy to register a company in Kigali. And the person who was talking was a person who moved from Italy because of how it's hard to start a business there, especially with taxes and, and, uh, start to, and registration. And he was talking how it was very easy for him to start a business in Kigali. So that was, but it was an old person. I want to hear how it is for young people. Yes, uh, I, I think one the, 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 you have the answer now. Mm. Because it is um, business business registration, I think it is the, I, I think we've been even seeing this and doing a business report. And you guys doing it very well. They know better, I think, in the, is it in 24 something like hours within one day you get your, your registration certificate so with the tax i think i've talked about the exemption that is a, an incentive or automotive action uh, but you see uh, by the way let, let me address this to young people you see when you talk about the population in general Rwanda, it's almost now around 13.3 million. But if you talk about the business, you find even because our, our, our country here, Rwanda, it is a, a youthful nation. People are very young. So if you talk about someone with 35 years and is doing business, I think he's doing a very good business, as Cyrus has said. So you talk about more than 60% of young people are involved in, in the business or they are in the private sector. Think about, as I have talked about, we are expanding the, the, the tax base, tax base, because we need to get this one, the, the tax are got from the private sector as well. So if you talk about, you know, there have been an argument, not even here, even in, in our different countries, 
that how can we exonerate taxes for the startups completely? <laughs> but the question goes at the same time. Now, how would the country be run? How is the country to develop? How is going country to get this? Because the country depends on the private sector. It's a private sector ready economy. So if you talk about the exoneration, the incentives, the what, I'm, I'm now talking about to, like a, a, at the policy level. You find at the end of the day, <laughs> the country can't run <laughs> because the country depends on the people. But this one is okay. We should understand it like that. But at the same time, creating those incentives, of course, we have we have some incentives in, in leasing. When we talk about the BDF, the business enrollment fund we, are, we have in Rwanda, we have leasing, we have the toolkits. Uh, but at the same time, we are trying to develop, you know, when, when access goes with mortgage. So how are you going to solve the problem of mortgage and security? <laughs> I'm not a business man, but I'm trying to fix this. <laughs> Because we talk access, you talk about mortgage and security. So I think what we are discussing is maybe the business enrollment fund, and this is a new, a new approach. We want to see how can we have the savings from saving groups, from saving the cooperatives of young people, having like 10, five people who have saved for more than maybe 10 months, right? How can we now BDF have a trust of those people who have stayed together as a cooperative for 10 months? I mean, that should be a trust and that one can act as well as the security or the mortgage. So it's, it's, it's a way of doing things indifferently and addressing this problem. And those are, should be the incentives. Otherwise, uh, the taxes, apart from that one that I've mentioned, we still even need tax from these young people. <laughs> so, but so it's it's a, it's a win one or the other. It's a win-win situation. So, I think that's what I can say. Thank you. I think that's that's really true. It's it's a win-win situation. It's just about how we see how we manage and and how maybe those incentives to say okay, you still have a small. Uh, your capital is small and you are still trying, we give you one year, we give you, uh, we, we see how if they are, the taxes have to be reduced, but completely zero, I think uh, no way it would be sustainable. And especially in a country which has like majority are young people. So the, those, those are people you have, there is nothing you can do. So um, just want to, to make sure that uh, um, I have people who are following and 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 they are here with me. Um, it's oh, I, I can read actually business in Rwanda is somehow fair. And within 24 hours, you get your certificate in, and this was due to the much effort the government put on on it by introducing the e-governor e system like Irembo and this reduced the bureaucracy system and corruption. Thank you very much. I think this is something to note uh, the way um, the whole uh, uh, online registration helps and, and move things quickly than, than going and doing hours and hours waiting. So I will just go to I would want to really open a, a discussion to, with anyone who is here. What are the key three challenges? If you were to be asked, what are the three key challenges most faced by youth-led enterprises in Rwanda? Are my challenges are tattoo. You think um, uh, most uh, faced by youth-led enterprises in, in, in Rwanda? Anyone who wants to start, I'm open. You guys are too quiet. Let's see who, who wants to start. Let's see who wants to, to say something. Nobody, that's not possible.
Mukirundi bavuga ngo turi ko dutamba twirorera so you guys have made me and Robert and and Ange dutambe twirorera <laughs> Okay, who is this? I see one hand. Uh, let me see who is. Oh, yes, I see. Have Guinea gone, and then we will hear from Teogen. Have Guinea can start. Have Guinea. Okay, uh, while we are waiting for him or her, since Kwarumukov, we can start with Teogen and then we go to Benny, Benny Grass. Teogen? I see you, but I think you are freezing. Benny? Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Um, actually, there are a lot of challenges people face when doing business in Rwanda, mm. but mainly when I go to youth, mm -hmm. there is uh, insufficient funds when starting their businesses, so they, are, they don't have enough to hire uh, like, like skilled labor to, to mm -hmm. carry out different function in their businesses. Mm. There is also less expertise because mm. of uh, like the average graduating age in Rwanda is 25 mm. due to different challenges and problems we faced in the history of our country. Mm. So like they lack some expertise and less funds to carry out all functions they want. Mm. There is also um, like a um, lack of awareness on business mm. uh, regulations mm. and how business is done in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially I, I'm talking about this because a lot of them are afraid of paying taxes and stuff. Yet mm. to me, I don't find them a challenge. Mm. But otherwise, um, a tool that also will contribute to developing their own businesses through uh, construction of infrastructures and other um, promoting uh, facilities to their own businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benny. Gra Grace or Grass, I don't know which. It's Grace. Grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. Those are very important points. Any other person? Okay, no problem. Let's go to the last question of, of, of this um, uh, section of questions. Um, do I still have Ange? Ange Marie, yes, um, uh, you are still here. Ange, if you were to say, uh, what do you think are the key reforms uh, government and private sector should improve to ease doing business for young people in Rwanda? If there are, Grass. Um, yes. Yes. Do you think there is any uh, hurry reforms which the government or private sector? I have been hearing a lot of uh, people talking about how private sector should should make a lot of change. I don't know what about in Rwanda. Um, I'm not good in businesses. Mm. But I can try. Mm -hmm. uh, since okay, sector privé. Mm -hmm. I'm going to to the government. Yo, don't it open kurubjuko kuba watangira businesses. Ichi baso na none njenda cha chigarula kuri tukebge urubjuko. Ukumba ni baba gusabje onsoro. Tanga mm. wakawa vat, ukumba, mm. ninga ho bari kwa chajinga, mm. kandi kwa chavifuze, it's a win-win. You want something that gives. Mm. 
ko nta kibazo kirimo kuba watanga umusoro runaka ntabwo baba kwa nini mu muri gukora ibintu bimwe ugomba kumva ko ni responsibility ya kuri de gusa habaye cyo kuba member wa sector kuko bagiye bafite ama like coalition bagiye bafite ukuntu bagenda bishyira hamwe bishyira hamwe niba registration yabyo ariyo yabigoye aho ngaho they can do improve bakorosha uburyo umuntu yabo mu member bitewe na career arimo tuvuge nka nka engineer niba umu engineer aba charging amafaranga menshi kugira ngo ajye mu rugaga donc aya mafaranga akaba yagabanuka nzi nabantu duturi gukunda kuvugaho ki ni ni rugarwa urugaga rwa banas n'abaforomo n'urugarwa rwa bamedesa donc ukuntu bakinga kugira age muri urwo urugaga donc biragoye pe biragoye baba charginga buri mwaka kandi amafaranga menshi nibo umuntu yarize donc akaba afite licence yo gukora ikintu runaka kubera iki bamutaje buri mwaka se buri mwaka degree itagaciro ku buryo akenera kupea buri mwaka kugira ngo iyo certificate ye ikomeze kuba iri valid ya aho natanga suggestion yuko at least they can make three or five years ya 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 runaka kuko nta nje kuri nje ntabwo byumva ukuntu nakwishyira certificate buri mwaka buri mwaka kugira ngo nkumerwe kuba muri domaine runaka cyo cyo nicyo kibazo nzi ari leta ndetse na private sector icyo cyubagomba bagitekereza thank you thank you very much i don't know if anyone has something to add on on Ange submission and if not we can just go to to another section i hope um the polls has been running if if yes just i want to yes 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 i think when you talk about the the private sector and the taxation policies around it. Mm. Mm. Me, I'm not looking actually particularly at Rwanda. Rwanda should not be looked at in, in, in isolation. Mm. No, Rwanda now, when you are discussing this one, mm. Rwanda should be, we should talk about Rwanda in, 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 in the region, in the region mm. of Rota, it is ESC. Mm. The ESC, we have a population of almost 150 million, I think, people, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. That is the market. But when we, we advocate, we should be advocating for the tax reforms mm. within ESC, a harmonization mm. of these taxes, because we are, we are, we are now looking into a bad market of ESC. Mm. So how, how, can, how, how can we harmonize now the, the tax policy? Mm. Within East Africa, just both countries. Mm. In Rwanda, we are trying to adopt what we call um, to promote SMEs mm. and the big companies mm. in terms of promoting made in Rwanda products to reduce the imports mm. so that we can, there could be a, a, a economic stability somehow. But at the same time, as much as we're emphasizing on this, uh, what about the, the 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 region? Are we on mm. the same page? Mm. Because we are targeting the market. Mm. I have told you we are positioning ourselves as young people mm. to tap into these markets. Mm. I think uh, we can. Some experts would think about it. Mm. How can we harmonize these tax policies within ESC uh, so that we can uh, target these? Uh, Based on the population, based on the, on, the, on, the, on the big size of the region, so that we enter into the market when we are all 
having the same understanding of tax policies and the, mm. and the other legal frameworks. Mm -hmm. Because there is a saying that no one owes you anything. Your mm -hmm. success and your failures are on your head and your head, <laughs> on your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And when you talk about your head and on your head, we looked at the heads of ESC. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. no. I, I, I like that point. And I hope it will be captured by our rapporteurs about harmonization of taxes, because that's, that's that touch. As you said, our population are young, and those are the people we are dealing with. So if, if we are failing on that, we are failing on our young people and, and how they do business, not just in their country, but also at the regional level. I just want to open another question to, to everyone who is here. And really, I am, I'm, I'm asking the participation of everyone. Uh, if today you were to be given an opportunity, let, let's say like the government just called you and say, Mr. Somebody, let me say Mr. Robert, Mr. Uh, Mas, Oh, Alexander, just reading names, Tyreek and, and, and Miss, Miss Fef and what, and you are being asked, what single item do you consider as urgent for your country, for your country's parliament to pass into policy or law <laughs> regarding young people's economic success in, in the country and the region? I don't want our panelists to answer. I just want uh, young people who are here to say, if you were to be asked, I will give our panelists after, but I want to first hear from our young people who, who are here. Let me see. Anyone? I'm trying to see if anyone has raised the hand. You guys, if you were, were imagine if I was to be having that opportunity to go and report to the president what you have told us, you will not tell me anything. <laughs> this is now why we are having consultations, we, are, we want to hear from you. What do you think would be most important for like the, the government or, or national parliament, national assembly to pass into law and to, you will say, okay, if they do this, me too, even if I'm not in business, I might enter. Or if, oh, my business will thrive more. My people, I am waiting. I'm still trying to see if anyone wants. Let me see. Namara, innocent. Yes, yes. Yes, go on. Mm, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Welcome. Uh, first and foremost, I first thank each and everyone who has managed to participate in this. Mm -hmm. And again, when I am to react upon on what you've asked, mm -hmm. I think what the government has to do, mostly here in my country, I think uh, it it really tries a lot. It really tries a lot to help the youth mm. getting engaged in those sectors business wise. Mm. But again, what I can re react on and the point of information that I want to clarify upon and to request mm. to those readers of ours, I think we need a lot, a lot, at least like 20% of the youth engagement in decision making. I think when we get involved in those areas of decision making, where we can go raise our issues in front of them, 
Mm. Uh, I think it can act as an eye opener to the youth and for them, they, they should feel motivated, or which, which can make them to come and practice in every activity, economic activity, even business. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Innocent. I see also Benny has uh, written something. Um, mine would be some tax waivers to some startups because they are among the challenges they get. I had seen somebody had raised the hands, but now I don't, I think he dropped. Okay, anyway. Uh, hmm. Uh, I will just let also uh, Ange Marie uh, just to say something about it, and then we go to the last uh, last um, uh, uh, questions on leadership. Ange, do you want to add something? Uh, while Ange is coming, uh, Fef, would you want to add something? I think Ange is struggling with her internet. Okay, no problem. So we can just go to the last uh, part of the discussion. Uh, uh, so um, the last part of the discussion is, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, it's about the leadership. Uh, as I think as and I announced it uh, when we started, we as you lead and our partners, we are working with um, uh, the former president of Tanzania, um, uh, Mauricio Kikwete uh, uh, to Jakaya Kikwete to uh, with his foundation to create something uh, which I can uh, um, which I, I think it's um, uh, a fellowship on leadership we want. We are trying to think how can we trying can we train young people to become the leaders? and the leaders we want. So um, I would want to hear some uh, views from you on leadership, but my first question uh, would be, and I will open it also to some of our partners here. That means uh, Gisa Robert and Fef, uh, Mutesi, and uh, then I will ask also Ange and and Robert to, to say something. Are we, are we already in what we do in our, our organizations in how we engage young people? Are we really preparing young people to be those leaders we would want to see in, in, in the near future? Uh, let me go first, Iget, because okay. I need, mm -hmm. I go get going to okay. another okay. session. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are in the middle way, but we still have a lot to do mm. because many young people, yes, they do not want to involve into leadership. Mm. But me, I consider leadership as key or governance as key to everyone's success. Mm. As, a, as an organization, we, Citizen Voice and Actions, I, I told mm. you that we focus more on youth engagement into democracy and mm. governance processes. We do have different approaches, which really help mm. young people to get prepared because they are the present and future community of, no, they are the future and the present citizen and also leaders of our community. For example, we, we have monthly schools of dialogues, which we conduct monthly in two, two districts mm. at sector level. Mm. Though it doesn't involve enough young people, but few we have have gained something. 
And for instance, two of our 30 members in Gatiwe district in the Eastern province are now, one is the cell economic and development officer, another one is the se executive secretary of a cell. That's an achievement for us as a national government, a national and government organization. We do also have other spaces, like we do have good governance clubs. Now we have currently established the Friday campus debates and public speaking events that are conducted in two universities that engage young people, university students, into extracurricular activities, mainly that focus on like improving their knowledge on government policies and programs that relate their work to the work that's, that is done out of school. This is a best channel because it provides information on how is the world looking outside of uh, chemistry courses or environment or, or anything else. And then it helps a university student to channel his way out of academics. So as non-government organizations, as civil society organizations, we are trying our best to get to, to give like tangible knowledge for young people, preparing them to be the best leaders of the, this future community, East African community. Thank you very, very much. And this this was so great to have you. I know you are leaving. That's that's why I want to say a big, big thank you uh, to you. And I hope we will keep engaging. Uh, let me just go to, to Gisa. Gisa Robert, are we doing enough? Oh, we still have to do more. Thank you, Kazi. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, I, I think um, what we do, it's, it's, it's a two-way street. Mm. There is what we do and some outcomes that we have control over, and there are some other things that we do where we don't control the outcomes. Mm. Um, I can say on one side that we are doing great things, but uh, not enough, uh, I think, because there is always a room for to, to do more. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, and some factors are beyond our control. We just act and hope to, to have the positive outcomes that we are looking for. But mm. in, in terms of uh, youth leadership, um, I think our organizations, uh, IPs and UDID and other partners, mm -hmm. they, they are coming up with uh, interesting innovations that can increase youth participation in leadership. But there are also other avenues that, mm -hmm. that are, are also, for example, it's, it's very fortunate that uh, here we have the executive uh, of the national youth council because it's it's the path to to leadership uh, mm -hmm. for youth in rwanda and we, we can commend the job that they are doing so the, there is that part we are playing as the civil society organizations but there is also that part that has to be played by the government and government-led institutions mm -hmm. so I, I think yes we are we are doing something and great things but uh, we still have uh, some way to go, but mm. so far the journey is it's it's on a positive road, mm. and we are having some successes because in Rwanda we have many many and increasingly many young people. Uh, I'm saying young people because I don't want to say youth, <laughs> 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 but the, the the definition of youth. But we have uh, young mm. people, if I can say maybe 35, because mm. people above that are not considered as youth in Rwanda. So mm. I would just say that they are young people, but we have uh, many young people in uh, leadership. Mm. We hope to get more, and uh, I hope maybe in the future I'll be using the word youth. Mm. So, but yeah, uh, it's very commendable. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert Gisa from IPs. Uh, IPs uh, together with um, uh, 
together with also governors for Africa. They are also our partners. Uh, Fev, to you. Hello. Hello. Sorry, cousin, I want to make a comment because I was. Oh, also... okay. That's good. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Thank you. I think it is it is an imperative to develop uh, and empower young people with vision and leadership. This is very, very interesting because developing young leaders into vision leaders will help the next political governance mm. of the next generation. That is very important because when you talk about the youth engagement, it's an example. This means you're talking about young people are involved in responsible and having responsibility, challenging actions to create a positive change, at least that one. Mm. That's why we talk about leaders. We need leaders who have the vision who can create a positive change. In Rwanda, we've been having very many platforms. We've been meeting mm. the head of state, his excellence, the president, like three times a year. Mm. We have the, the different leadership conversations and dialogues. We have to meet the president, we have the connect. This is, a, a, these are three main platforms that get involving the, the head of state and young people where they can talk about the leadership, the governance of our country, the way forward. And actually, <laughs> we even need even to think of Mm. taking a torch in your hand for the next mm. generation. Mm. And this has not been seen as Rwanda, as East Africa, but you need to look at it as Africans. Because mm. leadership is the core of the transformation we're talking today. Mm. Now, for us, we have Nationalist Council has been mentoring leaders in the different uh, private sector, government, we've been having these platforms, national council have structures from the, the village level to the national level to the parliament, the Africa legislative assembly. That's the framework of mentoring leaders. We have that, at least that structure and that framework. But at the same time, it should not be depending on the structure of the national council. Mm. There are some giddy presidents in different universities, we have, we have young people, of course, in the private sector that should also be mentored as leaders. But mind you, it is a cost today. Mm. <laughs> it also needs a cost. Mm. <laughs> because being a leader is also costly. You need, to, you need to have a sense of vision and a sense of dignity as well. So mm. it's costly. But, Talking about the fellowship of leadership of mm. the years we want as young leaders or the Africa we want as young leaders is a paramount. And the how to do it now. How can we involve mm. these young people? Mm. In, 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 in steering in them challenges that can help mm. to change the community and the government and he, the community as Africa. So we need to have empowerment, we need to have education, we need to have participation, we need to prepare, we need to support. And of course, we need now to see into the opportunities of leaderships in the different uh, sectors, in different institutions, and even different countries. Mm. So I think as I end, there is a saying that we, we want to stand for our well-being as young people. Mm. We should know that we should stand for our being. Mm. We should stand for our responsibilities as young people. Mm. And when we stand together mm. as Rwandans, as ESC, as Africa, then at least we can work for the future of our continent as well.
So we really need this transferable leadership of our seniors to this uh, generation shift of the next generation that is coming. So uh, for the liberations, I salute the initiative of your patron as well. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you very, very much. I think I will not add any comment on those very nice submission from Robert. I just want to really thank, uh, take this time to thank uh, the National Youth Council from Rwanda for the support, for, for the collaboration we have been having. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. I know you had a lot of things to do and you gave us your time. Thank you very much and greet everyone at the National Youth Council and greet also our young MPs, uh, uh, especially Kamanzi. So all uh, those people we have been in contact. I also want to say thank you to IPs Rwanda, to uh, Governance for Africa, and to West Wales uh, Startup uh, House. Everyone really thank you, thank you, thank you thank for you. very much for being bye -bye. here and, and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I would say by the content and the suggestions that, that young people give, uh, of course numbers are important and we have a great vision. We're envisioning 150 delegates in person, 20,000 virtually, but this is not to me the only success indicator. The success indicator is ensuring that all these 20,000 young people virtually provide inputs and meaningful engage throughout the conversation and all their suggestions are then incorporated into our post-summit agenda. Seeing a program that is co-created by young people, that's for me the biggest success.